Indiana has a long history of forests, really starting with what we can think of as the glacial period. And so over half of Indiana was covered by a glacier that gradually receded, and then those areas were reforested gradually. Uh, and then Native Americans arrived in, in North America and Indiana, and they actually started managing the forest. And so they would utilize fire and clearing to provide space for their settlements, for crops, and also to manage the forest for the wildlife they sought and the plants they used. And then when European settlers got here, they needed places to plant crops and grow livestock. And so there was a lot of clearing of forests that happened by the European settlers. We were perhaps 85% forested prior to European settlement. But after uh, just a few years of European settlement, there was a gradual clearing across the landscape to the point where in the 1900s, we had gotten down to about six or 7% forest. So the forests we have today are a reflection of the use that humans have put them to and the practices they have had on the land in the past. Many of our forests, in fact, over half of our forests, are over 60 years old now. And that's related to this pattern of agricultural abandonment that happened in the early 1900s and the regrowth of that land into forest. And that's one of our concerns, is it's great to have that much old forest. The problem is we've got very little young forest. Less than 5% of our land base is now in forest areas that are 20 years or younger. That's a very important habitat type for a wide variety of wildlife and also very important for the regeneration of a wide variety of tree and plant species that need full sunlight. And so if we don't have that disturbance on the landscape, gradually those species are gonna decline and in some places maybe even disappear. Disturbance is a really important aspect of forest biology, ecology, and also management. And so a disturbance is anything that happens, whether it be human caused or natural, that essentially sets back what we call succession the progression of plant communities through time. So we can think of disturbances of things like tornadoes or windstorms that blow down large areas of trees, but that could also be a fire or it could also be timber harvesting. And so a disturbance is anything that changes that general environment of the forest and essentially provides more sunlight, more exposure to space and light for the plants to grow. Natural disturbance oftentimes isn't enough to maintain that balance of species across the landscape. And so we can use timber harvesting and timber management to provide that disturbance that gives us that young forest. And so practices like clear cutting and patch cutting actually provide an opportunity to produce a large area with full sunlight that'll regenerate those species that need that to live and thrive. More and more logging uh, companies in Indiana are mechanizing, and so they're using feller bunchers, which are a harvesting machine that will cut and essentially pick up or direct, directionally fell uh, trees, and then you can gather them up and haul them out of the woods. And they have a, uh, a head that either has a, a saw blade, circular saw blade, or a chainsaw blade that severs trees, but they also have grasping arms that hold the trees and so in the process of severing, they can also direct where that tree is going to drop. Feller bunchers can harvest not only the merchantable timber, the larger diameter trees, but we also have many, many small diameter trees that typically with the chainsaw operation would not be harvested. We have an opportunity to have those trees cut by the feller buncher at the same time that we're taking the merchantable timber off. So that's a real advantage in many cases for the landowner operationally to have that opening completed and all of the uh, timber removed, all of the competition down, providing full sunlight conditions for new regeneration of trees. A common misconception is forest wildlife need mature forest. That, that has always sort of been our assumption over time. But what we realize is the diversity of habitat, whether it is those early meadows, whether it's this sort of middle, early successional habitat behind me or mature forest, different wildlife use that at different times. 
Early successional habitat, when we say that term, means the habitat that forms after a disturbance. In the case of a forest, this is where there is an opening in the canopy or the large canopy trees are no longer there, letting light in to the forest floor. What that results in is a flush of seeds and the sprouts on the floor to grow up quickly. We need to recognize that even if we don't see it, we oftentimes are benefiting from it. And so if you enjoy going to a park and seeing a variety of wildlife, particularly birds, oftentimes those birds are directly related to some of the tree species that we're favoring with these young forest areas. This habitat has disappeared, and that means that the species that rely heavily on it, and even species that may use a multiple different types of habitat, like the wild turkey or white-tailed deer, this habitat with the cover it provides, the food it provides, the insects that live here, it's disappearing. And without it, those species simply won't be here. The Natural Resources Conservation Service is an agency within the United States Department of Agriculture. We exist to help private landowners make management and conservation decisions on their land. So in the case of forest landowners, we are here to help you make conservation-minded decisions for how you would support your land for water quality, soil quality, timber resources, as well as wildlife resources. I was getting ready to retire and I thought that I would have to sell the property um, to financially be secure. I felt that a harvest would be destructive and destroy woodland and also destroy habitat for wildlife. Um, and through the process, I learned that that's not the case at all. I met a professional forester and found out that I could reach multiple goals which would be to be able to have financial income, retire, as well as create improved habitat on the property and be able to keep the property for recreation. The harvesting that we did on our property was done about two years ago, and the changes since then are amazing. What happened was it exploded with growth. There's a lot of direct sunlight, there's more access to different parts of the property, and there's a lot of diversity in the different kinds of plants that I'm seeing, wildflowers, um, small trees growing. Rough Grouse Society is a national conservation uh, organization. Our members are made up of a lot of individuals that are very interested in avid grouse and woodcock hunters, uh, but we have a very broad mission to work on behalf of healthy forests, abundant wildlife, and a conservation ethic. Grouse and woodcock, um, both, as well as a lot of other wildlife species, require young forest for at least part of their needs throughout the course of the year. Woodcock are a migratory species, and they actually leave Indiana and come back. Grouse are year-round residents, but they've both been impacted in the same way. Rough grouse are a species that a lot of biologists will call a bellwether species. In other words, they are an indication of effects that are probably seen elsewhere. Um, rough grouse are actually monitored more closely than a lot of other birds, but we can uh, infer that with their decreasing abundance, a lot of other species are probably affected as well. A lot of species may spend part of their time in those older forests, but they need some of that structure and some of the food resources down close to the ground for some of their requirements. We can see here, just 11 years later, after this area was considerably opened up, how much growth we have, um, how many trees, and how much of this structure that's in here that's important for wildlife is now back on the landscape. If we don't have that young forest environment creating the spaces for those plants to grow, we're ultimately harming that diversity of wildlife as well. So young forests is very important on the landscape as a point of biological diversity and the future of our landscape.